Hey there, if you don't know me, my name is Maria and I like to make technology videos on the internet. Oh my goodness, my chair is so squeaky. Grr. But yeah, in today's video, I want to tell you about what I've been doing this past month or so and give you an update on what I've been doing. So as you can tell by the title of this video, I joined a startup company and I want to tell you about why I did this on top of doing four courses at school and taking 25 hours a week to do an internship at Shopify as a back-end developer intern. Well, we'll get into the, all of that juicy details today and you'll learn a little bit about how I joined this company and how I heard of it, what it's been like so far, because it's been one month, and what I've been building. So with that, let's get into the video. Okay, so I wanted to first explain how I got into this company. Well, around the summertime, I joined a lot of Slack groups and organizations so I can meet new people and get more resources. So in one of these, I don't remember where, but someone posted about this opportunity called Flick, F-L-I-K, and I signed up for it. So it's basically this website where, or a portal, kind of like LinkedIn, where females in high school and university or college can sign up and make bios for themselves, listing like their job experience and their interests and what skills they want to learn and what kind of jobs they're looking for. So these females can become apprentices to female founders of companies. And what they're trying to do is trying to kind of bridge the gap of girls getting more jobs and more experience. So I thought that was really cool, so I signed up. And I didn't really think much of it because I wasn't really looking at the portal. I just made my bio, it got approved because that's what how the program works. You have to get approved after a day or two. And then what happened was this woman reached out to me. So what you could do is as an apprentice, you can look for a founder or as a founder, you can look for an apprentice or multiple apprentices actually. So then if you two connect, then they like, do the messaging of this website, then they will connect you together and you can talk. So we had a meeting on Zoom and we talked for a little bit about who we are and what she wants from me. So then we talked about that. And then after that, you can sign a contract and decide how long you want to work. So usually they do apprentices are three months. And what I liked about it was that it's not a huge time commitment. It's only 10 or less hours per week. So it's not a lot of time because I don't have a lot of time to commit for this. And I thought that was great because then I can learn something and challenge myself. And it's unpaid because like technically I don't need to get paid since I'm already being paid for my work. So I wanted to do this as a challenge for myself. I thought it so really fun. what happens when you both decide to start working together? Well, they make you sign a contract through Flick and then they give you this spreadsheet, like a Google sheet where you can fill in your hours every day or however many days you work or whatever and what you've been doing and things like that, which is actually nice because then you see how you've progressed over the few months or few weeks. I think that's great. So now I want to tell you more about the startup that I joined. The startup is called Mirth and it's very small. It's just the founder and then three apprentices. So me, this other girl who's working on the social media, another girl who's working on the blog part of it and fixing that up and a woman who is writing blogs. So yeah, there is all females and that's really great. So the company was founded by this woman named Emma who was traveling as a digital nomad for 10 years all across the world. And this is kind of her side hustle for the past few years because she has her own business. The point of Mirth is that she wants to help people build sustainable goals and actually practice more self-care. And she does this through her blog and the community of Mirth. But for many years, she has been using many habit tracking apps to track her progress. And she's found a lot of issues with them. And she wanted to create something new and try to actually increase like the accountability within a people to actually continue doing their goals because it is really hard to like force yourself to do something every day and institute new habits. She contacted me because, me specifically, because I had similar interests as her listed in my bio and because I listed development experience. So she wanted me to create a progressive web app, which I had no idea what it was and I'll explain later, but I thought about it and then I asked my current job, of course, if I'm allowed to do this. And they said, yes, if you're still like, if you can handle it and I'm like yeah sure I can but actually it's hard <laughs> and like not gonna lie it's pretty hard to balance school and two jobs basically and so I eventually decided to try it because well why did I decide to try this well I've never really built anything that's gone into market essentially I've built full stack web apps but just for myself I've never built anything for a client so I thought this would be a good 
to learn about that kind of side for it. Also, I really like the idea of the app, which I'm going to mention next, because I thought that this app would be used in my own life a lot. So now I wanted to talk about what was the app idea and how are we planning on creating it? So first of all, she wanted it to be a progressive web app. And what does that mean? Well, it's essentially a responsive web app. So just like how you know it, if the screen size changes, the layout of the website will change depending on if it's a laptop, computer, mobile phone, iPad, that kind of stuff. But the addition for a progressive web app is that if you're on a mobile phone, then you would go to that website and you could have the prompt saying that, oh, you can add this app or like this website onto your home screen, which makes it into an app essentially. So that makes things easier. So you don't have to create an app version and the website version, which is pretty cool. And if you're on the mobile phone, then you can actually have push notifications as well. And it also has features of making it more optimized for speed and things like that. And you can do some more research and I'll link some stuff below to learn more about that. Going into what the app was about, Emma's idea was that many people have a hard time actually instituting habits into their life and keeping up with them. And that's why I definitely agreed with her on. And I was like, yeah, this is literally me. This is what I'm struggling with. And if you saw my other video of me trying to master algorithms, you can see that I'm very bad at this. <laughs> so yeah, check that video out. For an example, so what if you and your group of friends all wanted to get fit and exercise? So you made some group called like Fit Fun Friends or something. So you all had that similar goal and you wanted to keep each other accountable for it. So you made that group. So in our case, we wanted to call them circles. One of you made that circle and you invited your three friends to it. And then what you guys can all do is add your own habits. You can add one or many more habits to it because everyone has different things, right? Like one person might want to run for 30 minutes as exercise. Another person might want to go on a walk or a jog or biking or weightlifting. So it could be completely different for every other person. So you don't want to just limit one group to doing the exact same thing. So that's what I really liked about that idea. And it took me a while to get to that point because I thought she wanted to gamify things. But what's really cool is that she wants it to be more of not a competition between groups of friends or people, but she wants it to be more of like a carrot. So you're leading people along and supporting them and not a stick where you're like, bad person, you didn't do your habit. Because the whole point is that you want to keep people accountable, but you want to be supportive at the same time. So while you can see that this person didn't do something for a whole week, and you just reach out to them and be like, hey, you should try, keep trying to do it. Or like, good job for doing it this day, but not that day. So try to be more supportive with your friends instead of just like beating them down. And what's really funny is that recently, me and my friends have started doing this similar thing through our Discord server. We made a channel called Health, and now we're trying to do 10 push-ups every day because Miki, who also has a YouTube channel that's really funny, you should check her out. I'll link her in the description. So she decided to start doing push-ups because she wants to get better at them. And yeah, we've all been trying to compress the videos of us doing push-ups and putting them into Discord to prove that we actually did it. I think this kind of app would be very useful. <laughs> so it's pretty funny. So now I want to talk about the process of starting out in this because yeah, I didn't just randomly start building an app. We had to think about it and discuss just like how I am with you now, discuss the ideas about it. And like I said, I had a completely different vision of what she was talking about. And it took me a few weeks to get to where she was actually aiming for it to be. And also for her, like, cause we're trying to like pull different ideas from different places. And like, I think differently from her. And what's interesting is that, yeah, first we started off in the first or week or so, what I was doing was researching what PWAs are because that's what she wanted. And also trying to figure out what tech stack I wanted to use specifically. Because for me, I want to learn something different from what I use every day because at work I use mostly Ruby on Rails and React. I want to do something slightly different. So I was like, oh, maybe I could try learning the Mern stack. Well, you'll see in the next video that that didn't end up very well. But yeah, so I tried doing that and that was my plan at least. So then the next phase was actually designing the app. So a year prior to me joining, Emma actually hired this woman to design the app, but she designed it with a lot of features in it. So it wasn't really MVP material. So I had to redesign it and learn how to design. Oh my goodness, this is the hardest part. Learning how to use Figma, which is actually great. Figma is not bad to learn. I had to learn many design principles, UX, UI kind of stuff because I'm so used to coding and I haven't done art. Like I, I originally came from an art background, did art my whole life. And then I got into computer science. I'm like, okay, computer science, 100%. Forgot about art. So I'm relearning a lot of stuff like composition, color theory like laying things out, UX principles, which are new to me, like grouping things together. And what I did to learn all this stuff was first of all, I watched a lot of YouTube videos and I can recommend Dev Ed's videos because he's really great. 
Second of all, I made a post on LinkedIn asking people in my network, hey, I'm a design noob, can anyone help me? Do you have any resources? And lots of people commented, which is great. And I'll link some of their resources below. And also, since I made that post, one of the senior designers who I was friends with on my previous team at Shopify, she reached out to me and said that she could actually review my designs and give me comments and feedback on them, which was really helpful because it's scary when you're trying to design something and you're like, yeah, it's good for me. But then when you get feedback on it, it changes and you have to not be hard on yourself. You have to, because like, it's kind of your baby, right? She gave me great feedback and I've been changing things around. So she looked at my version one and version two, which I'm going to show you right now. And it was really great. So I'm very thankful for her. And she gave me lots of great resources. Figma wasn't too hard to learn, but because, well, I've kind of seen how other Figma pages have looked like at my work and through other projects, but I never actually created my own. I just had to follow it and code what it looked like. So I initially started off with a mood board and this is very bare. And I was like, okay, link to the icons of material UI, some colors I wanted to use, then maybe a logo. Maybe this is my original primary button, but it feel, felt more like a secondary button, so I changed it later on. This will be my heading font and my subheading font. So here is my landing page. The app is called My Moai, and I added the Japanese for Moai, and it means for meeting for a common purpose. So the whole goal with this is that we're going to try to build sustainable goals with accountability circles. And then I found this website called Undraw, where this woman, she makes these illustrations for free because I obviously cannot illustrate. So I use these and you're allowed to use them. And then I added this section about our philosophy and how this works. So how I thought of how to do this was by looking at other websites for their landing pages. So then moving on to the onboarding phase, I kind of got inspiration of how the other woman developed these types of pages. So like, okay, you can create your own habit right now or you could choose from popular habits. This is kind of like weirdly spaced out because before I had like a star that you could click and then I later on changed it. And then you click the next button, you can create an account. So these would be, uh, you could flip through for based on each month and you can see all of your habits on one page. And then the green means you did the habit for that day and purple means that you didn't. So this is kind of like more color theory went into this because the green is like a nice thing, but purple, like you don't, we didn't want it to be red because then that would make like kind of hurt people's feelings, you know? And I wasn't kind of feeling this gray stuff, like how I made this as a gray background. I couldn't figure out a way to make it clean, but I later did through the help of my design friend. So yeah, I continued that. And this is how like you would click one of these cards and you would select it. And then it's like, okay, you can create a habit and then create a circle. And what I wanted the circles to look like was like, oh, you have this circle and then you enter it. Maybe you had a number for like what score your circle has, but we like later scratched the idea. And then we wanted this like sharing page that we later scrapped that as well. And like inviting the friend to an app and then inspiration, which we thought like, yeah, not in the MVP. Profile was pretty bare settings. I decided not to do on this page. Okay, so now moving into version two. So this is basically what I have at this point in time. So my designer friend told me that I should actually create these as bigger size pages. So I had to change the layout of things and make them much larger size. So it's a width of 1440 pixels. And then she helps me figure out how things should be grouped together. So like these will be much closer and have the same vertical spacing between the top and the bottom of this section. And then I changed the primary buttons because she said it didn't look like a primary button. And additionally, I added this sign in page. I added an empty habit list page. So what if you don't have habits and you just have this empty page with an illustration. This is what it would look like when you haven't filled in any of your habits and then the habit list, so it's the same thing, but kind of a slightly different. So I moved these arrows closer in, then the habit check. Oh yeah, also I changed it so that there's a white outline or white card with gray outlines, but it's still pretty visible. So that's good because you have to think about accessibility as well. And then what happens when you click something like this is also what you should be showing in your designs. So like, yeah, you click it and then you can edit the habit, add to a circle or delete it. And then yeah, editing a circle, you can invite a friend to a circle so you can search their friend by the email. And then if you can't find your friend, then you can invite them to the app because they might not have the app installed yet. And then yeah, creating a new circle is the same. And then this is how an actual circle would look like. So you can see the name of your circle that you're in. You can add a new member. You can see the names of the people and what habits they have added and see their progress. And yeah, circles looks the same. And then this is like, oh yeah, empty circles and your profile pretty bare for now and then settings, you can see if you can get notified by your email or SMS for circle invitations, and I'm gonna add privacy policy and that kind of stuff. So if you have any ideas, please let me know because it's definitely not final copy, but yeah, I would be interested to know your opinions on this stuff. Uh, so after all that is talking, 
yeah, I finally got to starting my code, but that's going to be in the next episode of this series. So if you like this video, then leave a thumbs up, leave some of your great design resources and what your thoughts are on my designs, because I could definitely use some input on them. And thanks for watching this video. Like it, the video, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.